Welcome back. With this um, segment, we are going to start a new unit, and this will take us away from elliptic problems. We're going to start looking at parabolic problems, right? And we're going to we're going to stick with linear parabolic PDEs uh, in three dimensions, but for a scalar variable. The kinds of problems we're looking at, therefore, are very similar to ones we've looked at. We've already uh, considered, um, they are the, the unsteady heat conduction problem in three dimensions uh, or the unsteady mass diffusion problem also in three dimensions. You will recall that previously we studied the steady state uh, versions of these two physical problems and uh, because we were looking at the steady state versions, those uh, particular PDEs um, are what we call elliptic PDEs. When we bring back the, uh, the time dependence, when say they're unsteady problems, we have parabolic PDEs. Okay, so with that somewhat verbose introduction, let's get on with it, right? Uh, linear parabolic PDE in a scalar variable uh, in three dimensions as well. Okay, and like I said, uh, the physical problems we are considering here are unsteady heat conduction unsteady heat conduction um, and mass diffusion in 3D. Okay, and just remember that unsteady here means that we're talking of time dependent. All right. So, what is the situation we have here? I don't have with me today my uh, my uh, basis vectors, but we don't really need them. We have our body, right, and we have basis vectors here, three-dimensional. Uh, everything that we talked about, the, the steady state heat conduction problem holds, okay? So we have surfaces on which we are going to specify Dirichlet and Neumann conditions for the temperature if we're doing heat conduction or the concentration if we're doing mass diffusion. That's, that's, that's fixed, okay? That, that remains the same. We have a source term, we have the notion of the conductivity tensor or the mass diff or, or the diffusivity tensor, all the same. The additional component is that we are saying now that at every point in the domain, uh, either the temperature, if it's a heat conduction problem, or the concentration, if it's the mass diffusion problem, is changing with time because of uh, fluxes or because of the source term. Okay, so at every point, we will have in addition a time dependent term. It's going to be a first order time dependence because uh, that is the nature of parabolic problems, right? And that is indeed the nature of the heat con of the time dependent or unsteady heat conduction and uh, mass diffusion problem, right? They are first order in time. Okay. So, with that setting, let's um, let's uh, essentially write out uh, the strong form. Okay. And as we've been doing, let's uh, begin by drawing a picture, a figure. These are our basis vectors, E1, E2, E3. All right. Our uh, domain is that. Right, three-dimensional, of course. We have three basis vectors here. Um, 
omega, right? Um, somewhat mercifully, perhaps, we are back to a scalar problem, right? So we don't need to worry about the three different uh, decompositions of the boundary, right? So we have uh, here partial of omega u, right? Because u is now a scalar, once again. And here we have partial, I believe, omega j is how we denoted it, right? All right. Now, uh, a point here has position vector x, which we will use, right? And um, at this point, the picture here, the usual pillbox argument that's given is the following, right? We look at a little elemental volume, okay? Uh, what we see is that we have uh, fluxes coming into it, okay? And since we've already introduced the notion of a flux before, we can use it now, okay? So we have fluxes coming into it, and, and for certain they could be exiting some part also, right? So, uh, right, so on. So this is our flux vector j, okay? Now, inside that little volume element, we have some source term. And that source term, you recall, if we're de dealing with a heat conduction problem, would represent local heating, right, through some external source. Uh, or for the mass uh, diffusion problem, it would represent a local supply of mass. Okay, so um, let me write an F if I can there. Okay, that's F. Now, what we are seeing in this unsteady uh, description of the problem, the description of the unsteady problem is that the result of the fluxes, uh, the net flux into that volume element uh, and the effect of the source term, uh, their combined eff effect is to change either the temperature per unit time, right, with, re with respect to time, either the temperature changes or the concentration changes with respect to time, okay? So um, let's also add in here essentially a, just to portray this, let me say that there is a du with respect to dt term also coming up, right? T, of course, is time, okay? So the strong form is the following. As always, given the data, given, um, I think we were still calling it UG back then. We had JN, which is our uh, influx condition. Um, our source F, right? And um, the constitutive relation that we are now very familiar with. Right, using coordinate notation, kappa ij being the conductivity tensor, right? Given all of this, now, we have one extra piece of um, not quite data, but it uh, really is a um, coefficient that's relevant to the problem. And I want to put it down here to have relevance to, the, to, to make connection with the physical problems that we are trying to keep at the back of our minds, right? The heat conduction and the mass diffusion problem. Um, that quantity is... Uh, um, going to be denoted as rho, okay? I'll tell you once we set up the problem what rho is. Okay, so given all of these, what we're trying to do uh, is the following. Find u, okay, such that the following holds, right? Rho partial of u with respect to time equals minus j i comma i 
plus f in now here is a, this this part is important when we were doing the steady state problem, we specified that the, all our steady, all our previous problems were uh, time independent, right? They were all steady state problems. Uh, we specified the PDEs, therefore, only over a spatial dimension, over a spatial domain, omega, right? Subset of R3 in general, in the 3D case. But now we have time dependence as well. So we say that this PDE holds in a combination of the spatial dimension, of the spatial domain and the time interval of interest. And that is indicated by a cross zero comma capital T. Okay, so the close interval zero to the capital T is our time interval of interest. Okay, and when we write omega cross that time interval, we are just saying that our PDE holds over a certain spatial domain omega and over a time interval zero to T. Okay, all right. As before, we have boundary conditions. We have u equals ug on the Dirichlet boundary. We have our Neumann condition minus ji ni equals j sub n on partial omega j. Is our problem complete with specifying boundary conditions? No, we need initial conditions as well, right? Because it's a first order problem in time, we have a single initial condition. Okay, and the way we do that is to say that u which can be a function of position. It is indeed in general a function of position, and this is what we saw in our steady state problems, right? So we have u as a function of, as, as, as parameterized by position, and at time t equals zero, okay, equals some u not function of position only, okay, right? And perhaps this is best clarified by also saying here that u is a function of position and time. Okay? All right. That indeed does complete the specification of our problem. The PDE, boundary conditions, and initial conditions. What I'm going to do here is just make one or two remarks. Okay, the first remark is that um, we need to say something about this new coefficient we've introduced rho. Okay, for a heat conduction problem, right, for heat conduction problems, can you tell me what rho is? Yeah, for, for a heat conduction problem, rho would be the rho is the specific heat. Okay, and in, and in the case of heat conduction, do you also know where our PDE comes from? What, what physical principle leads to our PDE? It's actually the first law of thermodynamics, okay? Uh, so in that setting, rho is a specific heat, okay? Uh, and, and the way we've written it, rho would be the specific heat uh, per unit volume, okay? So as, the, as we've written it, uh, rho is a specific heat per unit volume. The specific heat also can be de uh, determined as a, can also be defined uh, per unit mass, okay? But in our, in our setting, for the way we've set up the problem, rho is a specific heat per unit uh, volume, all right? Um, it turns out that if, however, we were looking at the, um, at the mass diffusion problem, Rho 
is equal to 1. Okay? We don't need a notion of, spe of, uh, specific, of anything like a specific heat in the context of mass diffusion. Um, mass diffusion just arises from a uh, physical principle, which is uh, the conservation principle. Okay? So that is the setting for, uh, for, for, for this problem. Uh, so, sorry, that, that is the sort of setting of context for, for, for the physical problems. Okay, so um, let me see. Is there anything else we need to really talk about here? Um, actually, I believe not. So we have laid down our strong form of the linear parabolic PDE in, scalar in a scalar variable in 3D. It connects up with our heat conduction, mass diffusion, uh, physical problems. And <clears throat> we'll end the segment here. When we return, we will do the usual, uh, take the usual steps that we've taken before, right? The weak form and then talk about the, uh, the finite element formulation.